All right, what's up everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the best home studio gear that you can buy right now all of it being under $200. We're gonna be covering everything from audio interfaces to microphones, accessories, and more. So stick around guys, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. To kick off the list, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the audio interfaces. And first up on my list is the cheapest audio interface out of the three that I will mention, the Behringer Euphoria UM2. The Behringer Euphoria UM2 has a mic slash line preamp, an instrument and headphone jack on the front side, and a set of outputs on the back side for connecting to some speakers. There's three knobs on top of the audio interface, one which controls the mic slash line preamp, the other controls your instrument, and the last one controls your headphones. This is the cheapest option on my list that I have today, but again, this is a great first option, especially if this is your first audio interface that you are picking up for your setup. The next audio interface on my list is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen. This has one mic preamp along with an instrument and headphone jack on the front side and a set of outputs on the back for connecting to some speakers. This is without a doubt the most common audio interface that I see and you really could not go wrong with it. You will be able to produce some amazing quality using this audio interface. And the last audio interface that I'm going to recommend on this list, and it happens to be the audio interface that I am currently using right now, and that is the brand new Mo2 M2. There are two mic slash line slash guitar inserts on the front side, along with a headphone jack and a set of outputs on the back side for connecting to some speakers. This will give you hands down the best possible quality that you can get, and it even competes with audio interfaces that are almost a thousand dollars. It has amazing latency, direct monitoring on each channel, and a set of MIDI ports on the back side. Hands down, for the value, what you end up paying for, this is the greatest audio interface that you can currently buy right now on the market. Moving right along, we're gonna kick off our list on the condenser microphones, starting with the Samson CO1. Now, I've owned the CO1U in the past, and that is a USB microphone. This is the XLR version, and since we're gonna be getting an audio interface, it's important that we choose the CO1 and not the CO1U. This is the cheapest microphone on the list, but it can deliver some serious results if you know what you are doing. Overall, this is a great first microphone to pick up. The next microphone on this list is one of the most popular condenser microphones of all time, the Audio-Technica AT2020. This microphone remains a favorite for a lot of people due to its capabilities and the overall results that you can get from this thing. Even if you weren't on a budget and you didn't have this microphone, this is a really good Good option to have in your mic locker. And the last microphone on my list, and happens to be the microphone that I'm using right now, the TechZone Audio Products Stellar X2. This microphone has gotten a lot of popularity due to its shockingly similar tone to a Neumann TLM-103 and a U87. There are actual videos out there on YouTube where people are A-being this microphone side by side with a TLM-103 and a U87, and the results are shocking. They sound very, very similar, and especially when you see how much this cost, it's a no-brainer. This is a microphone to definitely have in your setup. Not to mention when you buy this microphone, you also get a lot of accessories. You get a shock mount, a traveling case, a foam screen, and a leather pouch that you can store your microphone in when you are not using it. Moving right along, normally I wouldn't recommend dynamic microphones, but I figured there were probably some people out there that were wondering what were the best under $200. So I figured that I would include my pick for the best that are under $200 currently on the market. The first dynamic microphone that I would recommend, and it's a super popular one that has been around for a long time, and that's the Shure SM58. This is the cheapest dynamic mic on the list and also happens to be one of the most popular of all time. It has a broad range of applications and is regarded as just overall one of the best dynamic microphones that you can buy, especially for how much it costs. The next dynamic mic on my list, which also happens to be the exact same price as the Shure SM58, is the Rode Pod Mic. This microphone is marketed as a podcasting broadcast mic, so if you're going to be starting up a podcast or you just want that sound straight out of box, this is probably the mic to go for, and especially for how much it costs. And the last dynamic microphone that I'd recommend is the Sennheiser E935. This microphone has the most ideal specs in my opinion, and if I had to pick between the three, I would definitely go with the Sennheiser. 
However, there are definitely better dynamic microphones on the market, but most of them are very expensive. So for under $200, you really could not go wrong with a Sennheiser. If I were you, I would pick the Sennheiser E935 if you are looking for a dynamic microphone. Moving right along, I wanted to share three pairs of headphones with you guys, which I believe are amazing for the value, all of which are under $200 and have some amazing specs behind them. The first on my list and cheapest out of the three, the Sony MDR7506s. These are absolute studio staple headphones. These are 100% the most used closed back headphones that I have ever seen in studios. When I show you a picture of these things, more than likely you have seen these because they are very, very popular. These have been around for a long time now. They have amazing specs behind them. They sound great. Again, they're closed back, so you're gonna be using these when you're tracking vocals. In my opinion, these really are some of the best headphones that you can buy, especially closed back, and it's a no-brainer for how much they cost. The next on my list, and they also happen to be the ones that I am currently wearing right now, the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. 250 ohm version. I absolutely love them. They're very comfortable with this velour pad lining and also they trap in sound very well. I've noticed that when I go to track vocals, there is absolutely no sound bleed coming from the headphones, which is important because if you're using a closed back pair of headphones, you wanna make sure that there is as minimal amount of sound bleed as possible. Because more than likely, you're gonna be using these while you are tracking your vocals. And the last thing that you want is your instrumental bleeding into your vocal track. That is why you don't track vocals in open back headphones. You want a pair of closed back. And again, the Sony MDR7506s and the DT770 Pros are amazing and I couldn't recommend them enough. And the last pair of headphones that I would recommend, and they also happen to be another pair that I own, the DT990 Pro. 250 ohm version. These headphones are great. And when it comes to mixing, ideally you wanna be using studio monitors, but if you're in a similar situation as myself and you live in either an apartment or you're just in an environment where you need to be quiet, you're going to have to do your mixing on a pair of open back headphones. These are some of the more cheaper headphones on the market. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get them, but they provide a great sound. And the thing about using headphones is that you wanna buy the most neutral as possible so that you're not getting any false coloration when you are mixing your music. They're easily my second favorite pair of headphones behind the other pair of headphones that I use for mixing, which happen to be a lot more expensive. But I can tell you right now, the DT990 Pros are great. And if your goal is to mix music with a set of headphones, Phones, these are not a bad option and especially for how much they cost at the end of the day and finally guys I just want to share some of the accessories that I think are going to be important for setting up your first studio or maybe you already have a studio and you're just looking for some additional equipment to add to it these accessories that I'm going to mention and name off, I feel like will benefit you. So if you decide that you're gonna use a dynamic microphone, you're gonna notice right away that your microphone sounds very quiet when you plug it into your audio interface. And that's because your dynamic mic is going to require a lot more gain than a phantom power condenser microphone. And with that being said, the first accessory that I would recommend is the Cloudlifter CL1. This will provide 25 decibels of clean gain prior to going into your audio interface. A lot of the times with these budget audio interfaces, the more you drive the gain on them, the more the quality begins to taper off. This will ensure that you get the best possible quality out of your dynamic microphone if that is the route that you choose to go down. The next accessories that I would recommend are tripods and boom arms. I use a lot of the tripod boom stands from the company on stage. They're affordable great quality, and you should have no problems with your microphones tipping over. You can trust that they're gonna be held in their place and that they will be safe, protected, nothing will happen to them. Again, tripod boom stands from the company on stage. Those are the ones that I would recommend very, very affordable. Now, if you're gonna be doing podcasting or you want to mount this to a table or something, I would recommend that you get a boom arm. And the boom arm that I recommend is the Blue Compass. It's one of the cheaper boom arms on the market while still having amazing quality and overall having a very professional look to it. The next thing I would suggest is that you guys buy XLR cables. And the ones that I would recommend are by a company called Cable Matters. I've been buying a lot of their XLR cables lately because they're super affordable and you can get some very long ones for amazing prices, amazing quality. I've had zero 
zero issues with them. I've been using them for some time now. And yes, I have used expensive cables in the past. I've used Mogami cables. And really at the end of the day, it's so unnecessary to be spending $60, $70 on one XLR cable when you can spend $30 for like a 20, 25 foot cable from Cable Matters and you get a two pack when you do that. So you will have one for backup in case your first one ever goes down, which I have had zero issues with my cables and I've had them for some time now. So again, cables from this company called Cable Matters, those are the ones that I would recommend. I have two pop filters that I would recommend for you guys, both being different from each other. The first one is a metal one from a company called Stedman. It's the PS101. And then I am using a fabric pop filter from the company Sterling Audio. This is the PF2. The metal pop filter works in a way that it literally redirects air. So as the puff of air from your mouth hits the metal pop filter, the grooves in the pop filter redirect the air to travel down rather than aiming directly at the capsule. So it actually has a little bit of technology behind it and it's, I would say it is more beneficial to get the metal pop filter as the fabric pop filter is just diffusion so what will happen is the puff of air will hit the fabric and then disperse again the metal pop filter has more technology behind it whereas it will literally redirect the air and overall you will find that there will be way less plosives in your recording using the metal one so i would suggest just fork up the extra money and get the metal one over the fabric one which just diffuses the air. The next accessory that I would recommend and it will literally change the tone of your recordings is the Art Studio V3 Tube Preamp. These things are really cool in that they allow you to add warmth to your vocals and as well you can drive the input gain and get some tube distortion out of these things. At the same time, you can also replace the stock tubes on these with other more expensive tubes which will drastically change the tone of the unit. At the end of the day, this is an amazing price point for this, and it is not a bad first preamp to get and experiment with. Just make sure that the audio interface that you pick allows for a line signal because you will need to run a line signal from the V3 into your audio interface. I have more on that on my channel about how to use two preamps and how to connect them to your audio interfaces. So if you wanna know more about it and see whether or not you should get one for your setup, just go back through my channel and you will find videos that I have done on implementing preamps into your recordings. And the last accessory on my list that I would recommend is a shock mount is the Ryko 44901 Universal Shock Mount. You have no idea the amount of times I have to take off my microphone from the stand just to attach another shock mount because this shock mount doesn't work with another microphone that I have in my collection. With this shock mount, it's universal. So you can literally unscrew the little uh, points, the contact points on the shock mount and your microphone can slide into place. So you can literally use this shock mount with any microphone that you have. This thing is very handy and I actually plan on picking one up for myself here soon because I'm tired of always having to unscrew the shock mount just to put another one on. It just gets very tiring. And as you get into this stuff and you start to build up a collection of microphones, Trust me, having a universal shock mount is 100% necessary. It sucks having to go through and unscrew your shock mount every single time. So again, the Ryko 44901, this is a awesome choice for a universal shock mount. All right guys, and that is my list of all the sub $200 budget professional gear that you can buy and get amazing quality with. Again, I am using a microphone that is sub $200 and an audio interface that is sub $200 as well. But just listen to the quality that I have been getting throughout this video. It sounds amazing. And this is no post-processing. So imagine if I went through and I literally tried to make this thing sound better. Again, this Nowadays, it is very easy to get a very professional sound from home and it will not cost you an arm and a leg. I am using the Stellar X2 by Tech Zone Audio Products, sub $200, amazing microphone that compares to a TLM 103 and a U87. For the record, those are over thousand dollar microphones, multiple thousand dollar microphones. If you don't believe me, go look it up for yourself. There's videos where people A, B the microphones. And as for my audio interface, that thing competes 
easily with audio interfaces that are above $300. This is an absolutely amazing setup and I would 100% recommend it to you if you are building a studio or if you are looking to upgrade. Again, the Motu M2 and the Stellar X2 are absolutely amazing pieces of gear. I'm gonna have links in the description so that if you wanted to check out the prices on everything or possibly pick them up for yourself, all the links followed by the name of the product will be in the description below. And they are Amazon affiliate links. So every time you purchase from those links, I will receive a small commission at no additional charge to you guys. So that is very, very much appreciated. Thank you so much if you use those links. They support my channel and help me to grow the channel and get more gear for the channel to, to review and recommend to you guys. So again, if you use those links, thank you very, very much much i seriously appreciate it thank you anyways guys let me know what you think of the video also leave down any equipment that i forgot that are honorable mentions if you have any questions go ahead and leave that in the comment section and i will get back to you other than that that wraps it up so i will catch you guys all in the next one so peace out everybody